Hello everyone, today we are talking about AI and Power BI and we have Justina Luchnik from uh, Power BI team, a PM in Power BI team who is uh, specialized in AI and Power BI and we have a lot of interesting things to talk about this new announcement of AI in Power BI. Hi, Justina. How are you? Hi, Reza. I'm great, thank you. How are you? <laughs> great, thank you. Can you introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. So uh, my name is Justina Luchnik. I'm a PM on the Power BI team. I've been uh, around in Power BI for the last uh, five years. And currently what we are working, or three years actually, I've been in Microsoft for five years. Um, and we're, what my team is working on is looking at the AI investments inside Power BI. Um, and so that uh, looks across, K and, and my specific area of focus is looking at the Nancy consumption, so our business user consumption of AI inside Power BI. Correct. So, so that, that's good because previously, based on my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, previously we had, um, let's say, integration of R in Power BI, Python added recently into Power BI, mm -hmm. but we had no, let's say, team working on incorporating AI in Power BI. It was just like a little bit of small work here and there. Now we have a team working on bringing these new features. That's right? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So previously we had um, the AI investments in Power BI really spread across the various teams. So we had some teams, you know, look at, let's say, the R integration pieces. We had some teams who were working on things like quick insights, another team working on Q&A, someone looking at forecasting. And now we've consolidated, consolidated all of those efforts under one team and that's looking across Power BI holistically and looking at how we can include AI experiences in Power BI, you know, across the desktop, the service, and across all the different personas we have, which are, of course, our business users, our analysts, as well as our data scientists. Correct, correct. And 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 I believe uh, the, let's say, business user, which you call it Nancy persona, I think that is like the main focus in all of Power BI development, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So even if we do have, you know, experiences that are being lit up uh, for, you know, our analysts, or for our data scientists, ultimately, we want to really focus on making sure that the consumption experience of all of those insights for Nancy is uh, amazing and immersive. Okay, that, that's great. Thank you. So in, in your demos that you showed uh, in Ignite, I liked a couple of those. And one of them was uh, ability to call uh, Azure ML functions from uh, like a Power BI website. I think it was from a Microsoft Flow uh, activity, which sounds really interesting. So behind the scene, there is, I think, a Power Query function call to that. Can you mm -hmm. give us a little bit of background yeah. information? Yeah, of course. So we are investing in AI enrichments for our analysts to be able to set up, you know, things that are like cognitive services and Azure machine learning a lot more easily without having to write a single line of code. And Correct. current the current investment and the first thing we're going to release um, in the next uh, two months or so is the ability to leverage Azure machine learning directly from inside a uh, data flow inside Power BI, inside mm -hmm. the service. So we're introducing data flows, which are is um, our capability of doing um, kind of uh, enterprise self-service data prep for our analysts inside the Power BI service. And as part of that, we're going to have AI enrichments. And one of them is going to be Azure machine learning models. So previously in the past, if you wanted to call um, Azure ML from Power BI, you would have had to, you know, do a lot of this hooking up and integration stuff yourself, you would have had to figure out how to call the web service and either use our integration or use, you know, figure out how you're going to call the web service via M. And, you know, it's it's not trivial. Correct. Um, and, you know, so currently what in, in the integration looks like is when your data scientist has been working inside Azure and has created their Azure ML model, this model, all they have to do is share it with the analyst. And once they have shared it, the analyst is able to click on these AI enrichments. Uh, they see all the Azure machine learning models that have been shared with them, and they just have to then map it to their data. So, you know, the model will expect some inputs. Um, for example, if it's an image classification model, it expects an image to be passed to it. And all the analyst has to do is select the image, uh, call them inside their data set, 
uh, click OK and the function just automatically gets invoked. It's just an, at that point, you know, a Power Query function, it's just another M step and every time your data refreshes, you know, it basically gets called and you get new things scored inside and uh, just a new calculated column added to your data set. Mm, that, that's great. So, so from user point of view, it is just calling a function, but behind the scene there's an ML algorithm, uh, a data scientist probably like created it before, did the data train, did the training, all the testing, mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, and that process of uh, calling web service from M, all those kind of things is already, uh, let's say the hard work is done uh, behind the scene. User just click the button, uh, choose the uh, algorithm, choose the input, let's say variables, uh, columns, and then everything goes. Finally. Yeah, they just click OK, and without having to write any code, they can get it working. Mm, that That's fabulous. That's awesome. And and uh, when this would be available? I know you cannot say exact <laughs> times, but when about? Yeah, not giving a precise date, but it's going to be available in data flows in preview in November. Oh, that that's really good. Hmm, that's really yes, good. Yes, so very soon. Yeah. Very soon. Hopefully, you guys will be able to play with it and give us feedback and tell, you what, tell us what you like and don't like so much. Yeah, I know a lot of people would be interested in that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great. Another uh, another interesting demo that you showed in uh, in your Ignite demos was uh, inside Power BI Desktop when we had that um, Q and A, and you had the part which you could do like follow up on your Q and A questions, and it brought lots of let's say uh, extra insight. How how does that part work? Yeah, so uh, in this case, you know, we're basically um, extending the capabilities of Q and A. Yep. Um, and so there's two different um, investments that we're doing for Q&A. Uh, when you click on follow-up questions, you'll be able to either uh, type in your own natural language questions. Yep. And so that is going to retain the context of, you know, the question that has been asked. So if you ask something like, hey, you know, uh, visits to Hawaii by trip purpose, you could then just type in, you know, in 2018 and Power BI will pick up that hey this is the context of you know the question that you just asked and it'll know how to kind of intelligently handle that. The other integration is actually hooking it up with the quick insights engine that we have today inside Power BI. So if you you know part of my demo was also being able to right click on a visual select something like hey what explains the decrease or what it cha you know explains is the change in distribution. Um, now we're going to be when you ask a follow up question we'll also be prompting you with questions and that's going to be powered by that you know, insight engine to basically figure out, well, the user has just plotted this particular bar chart and it has, let's say, a time dimension. And what, given all of those factors, what's a good follow-up question that we can ask? And so we try to proactively figure out using that same engine that we have inside Power BI for doing insights, um, kind of a more intelligent, almost conversational way of being able to ask your Q&A questions. Mm, that, that's kind of, great. Um, yeah. And this is this is is it kind of like the same extension on what we already have when we right click on a column and say explain the increase? Is it something like a next level of that? Yes. Right. Yeah, you can think of it as a new entry point and a more kind of natural um, entry point for a way of you know for a business user to just interact with natural language versus you know having to um, and and also in some way prompting the user more proactively with well this is an interesting question you might want to ask given you just plotted versus the more kind of reactive way where the user has to think about oh I might be interested to see what drives this let me right click it so it's more trying to surface it proactively to you mm, that that's that's great thank you for all of these interesting features mm -hmm. and this would be also available around the same timeline. Not going to be available in November. This oh, okay. one is a little bit further out. I don't, you know, can't really commit to a firm yeah, kind see. of date. But it's going to be a little bit further out than the. It, again, it shouldn't. You know, we're not talking about things that are going to be years away. Yes. But um, you know, a couple of months. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That 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 sounds good. Uh, I had also, uh, as part of these interviews, I had also a talk with Vi Hyung. You may already know him. He's part of like Azure AI team, and we talked a lot about how um, AI became much easier these days. We have like cognitive services, custom vision. We can process images, uh, like Windows Hello, which gives us like AI when we log in. So, do you see in future? I'm not saying near future, but sometimes in future that these will be incorporated into Power BI. Like, for example, when I use my mobile phone 
to use Power BI app, then uh, something like Windows Hello detect my uh, face and I log in automatically, or I have images in my Power BI report that I can send to Custom Vision to scan and things like that? That's a great question, Reza. And, you know, we actually have a PM who is dedicated to looking proactively across the Azure ecosystem and figuring out the right integration points for, you know, all the cool stuff that's happening inside Azure from an AI perspective with Power BI. Because, you know, the last thing we want to do is reinvent the wheel. There's so much, you know, we've got data scientists, we've got Microsoft Research who are, you know, already working on amazing research and amazing technologies. Right. And so we really want to think about how we can leverage those technologies directly inside Power BI as opposed to coming up with our own inventions. So you're already seeing some of this integration happening with, you know, making it easier to call Azure Machine Learning, which we talked about. Mm -hmm. We are bringing cognitive services, starting with the textual analytics ones, um, directly into Power BI, also through AI enrichments and data flows. So also in November, you will be able to, you know, use your textual analytics uh, services directly out of the box um, inside Power BI. And we are looking to you know, um, further increase this to all of the different cognitive services that we have um, throughout the company. And so we are looking continuously for new ways to uh, integrate better with uh, you know, all the amazing products and services that are emerging inside Azure. Mm, that, that's, that's great news. Um, it's really fascinating because Power BI itself is quite great product, powerful with M, with DAX, with all these visualizations. Now bringing all these, power, all these let's say, AI functionality in that, that's, that's super. Um, any, yeah, any, and then just, yeah, just yeah, to add sure. to that as well, Reza, you know, because you touched on another interesting point. The other thing where I think we're just at the very beginning of it and we really want to invest in more is making Power BI itself smarter as well. And mm. so being able to, you know, uh, as you kind of said, like, okay, if, you know, you log in and Power BI just recognizes you, can we uh, have more and do more suggestions for our users proactively based on things that they're plotting, based on, you know, the visuals that they have, based on the measures they're creating, to help them, guide, you know, guide them through by um, just making, yeah, Power BI itself as a tool smarter rather than just making the toolkit smarter. But this is, a, you know, a little oh, bit far out. That, very that's early really on interesting. In yeah, that, that sounds really interesting. So something like a quick insight, but to help, let's say, me when I log in, what should I look at and what type of things I'm looking for. Oh, that's, that's really exciting. Great, thank you for that. Any other, let's say, announcement that I missed and you would like to mention? Yeah, so there's another one that was shown during Eric Boy's keynote towards uh, the end of it, uh, which uh, actually ties in very well with our story around Azure integration. Uh, this is integrating with an Azure service uh, that's coming out of Eric Boy's organization, which is called Automated ML. And so what the Azure ML team is doing is they're releasing this technology which actually uh, makes the creation and authoring of a machine learning model a lot simpler. Uh, you kind of say which fields you want to use, uh, but then it does a lot of the feature selection. It you know, runs through a number of different machine learning algorithms to figure out the best ones. So a lot of those steps that data scientists usually go through um, are essentially automated for a user. And so um, the barrier to entry for machine learning becomes a lot lower. And so what we're doing, and this again is going to be available in preview in, in November, is as part of data flows, you'll be able to actually add your own machine learning models. So you can think of this as a kind of um, a step before, you know, it, before the Azure machine learning one. If you want something completely custom and you want all the different knobs, then that's where you would collaborate with your data scientists and have them build something using Azure machine learning. But if you as a business um, analyst want to start you know, dabbling with machine learning, building your own machine learning, you don't want to go into Azure, you want to stay within the confines of Power BI and you want to iterate very quickly, you'll be able to start doing that directly inside Power BI as of November with the automated machine learning that's going to be coming in. Hmm, that's great. So that is coming in November. Yes, in preview as well as part of Dataflow. Oh, that that is great. I I actually seen that demo. It was really interesting. That uh, like uh, you choose the which uh, algorithm you want. You want to do like uh, uh, this, let's say. Uh, clustering those kind of things uh, and then based on that you follow like a wizard of steps which is I think yes. like um, um, let's say basic machine learning but basic let's say mm -hmm. in um, for me let's say I'm not a data scientist at all I have no idea how to do that it at least give me uh, a tool to work with then later on if I want to enhance it then 
I can get the data scientist help to do the rest in machine learning. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, leveraging behind the scenes the same sophisticated machine learning models that would be available to data scientists and somewhere like the Azure Machine Learning Studio is just trying to help you automate the process of training and doing your feature selection and um, all those kind of steps and just facilitate, facilitating your journey essentially through that. Oh, that's great. That's great. Thank, thank you for all of these uh exceptional features are adding into Power BI. I really appreciate that. Yeah. And everyone is watching to uh, get a hands on these as soon as available. Um, yes. Awesome. Anything else you would like to mention to audience? Um, yeah. So in terms of other things that maybe, you know, you guys might have missed in August, we introduced Python, of course, into the Power BI desktop. Yep. So that I know has been a, something that a lot of people have been asking about. There's a lot of excitement. So yes. we've got now at the Python data connector, being able to author Python visuals as well as Python Power Query transforms. Um, and so, yeah, that's now essentially what you could have done with R in the desktop. You can now do with Python as well. Yeah. Python integration um, is awesome. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, in terms of, I think, the announcements that we made um, at Ignite, those were those are essentially the big things that are coming in. The AI enrichments through cognitive service and Azure ML integration, the automated ML, and the improvements to, um, to Q&A uh, through follow-up questions in Python. So those are, you know, the things that are, and these are all going to be coming very, very soon. Uh, we are working on a whole bunch of uh, you know, extra features, which uh, it's still very early on, so can't talk about too much. Mm. But, you know, because, you know, as you've mentioned, Rosa, this is a kind of a new focus for Power BI and kind of investing heavily in a independent AI Power BI team. There's going to be a lot of new cool stuff coming in the AI space, you know, continuously throughout the next months. Mm, that's interesting. That's interesting. Thank you for all of these explanations. And thank you for your time. We really appreciate your time. Uh, everyone will be looking forward for playing hands-on with these awesome features. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you so much, Reza. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye. Bye.